A warm greeting. Today is Monday, March 31, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. Tomorrow, April 1st, marks exactly two months until the official start of the Atlantic hurricane season and a month and a half until the Eastern Pacific hurricane season begins on May 15. As usual, starting in mid-March, some agencies and specialized groups in tropical meteorology begin releasing their projections for the upcoming hurricane season. I recorded this short video to discuss two forecasts that have been released in recent days, the first by Weather Tiger and the second by AccuWeather. These two groups are among the first to publish seasonal forecasts. Additionally, next Thursday, Colorado State University will release its first forecast for the upcoming hurricane season. Before discussing these forecasts, I wanted to provide an update on sea surface temperature anomalies in both the Niño 3.4 region and the Atlantic. According to the latest ENSO outlook published by NOAA today, we remain under La Niña conditions. We continue to experience La Niña conditions in the Pacific. However, the latest bulletin indicates that we are approaching neutral conditions, making it very likely that in the coming weeks, La Niña will dissipate and transition into neutral conditions. In fact, there are two very interesting things we can observe in this sea surface temperature anomaly chart. First, notice the red-colored areas representing warmer-than-usual temperatures, which dominate the Niño 1 plus 2 region. However, further west, over the Niño 3.4 region, sea surface temperatures are near normal. Why is this important? Because we will be closely monitoring how ENSO evolves. Historically, neutral ENSO conditions or La Niña tend to favor an active hurricane season in the North Atlantic, whereas El Niño typically reduces cyclonic activity. Additionally, we are currently in what is known as the spring predictability barrier, a period when forecasting ENSO conditions for the peak of the season becomes quite challenging. According to the latest forecast, there is a high probability that we will have neutral or La Niña conditions at the peak of the hurricane season. In fact, there is only a 13% chance of El Niño developing, which is a factor likely to contribute to a more active than usual hurricane season. However, keep in mind that other factors can also influence cyclonic activity in the North Atlantic, one of which is sea surface temperatures across the main development region, the Caribbean, and the Gulf of Mexico. As I mentioned in the previous video, the cooling of waters just west of Africa continues, which could be good news for slightly limiting the development of tropical cyclones originating from Africa. However, as we can see in yellow and orange colors, sea surface temperatures across the subtropical Atlantic, the Caribbean Sea, and the Gulf of Mexico remain above normal. If we once again analyze the temperature anomalies in the main development region, you can see in this graph, represented by the blue line, that, on average, temperatures across this area are above normal but up to 1.5 degrees Celsius lower than what we saw last year. Despite temperatures being warmer than usual on average, the good news is that they are not as high as they were in 2024. However, keep in mind that this is an average spanning from the African coast to the Caribbean Sea, which we refer to as the main development region. But if we focus specifically on the Caribbean Sea, you can see that sea surface temperatures remain quite warm and are very close to what we observed last year. Also, note that the Gulf of Mexico continues to experience significantly high temperatures, some of the warmest ever recorded for this time of year. So, while the cooling of waters west of Africa is favorable, it is also important to monitor the subtropical Atlantic, the Caribbean Sea, and the Gulf of Mexico, as these above normal temperatures could contribute to increased cyclonic activity. Combined with potentially neutral or La Niña conditions during the peak of the season, this could result in a more active hurricane season than usual. However, it is important to mention that current conditions do not appear to be as favorable for hurricane activity as they were last year. Now, let's take a look at the first forecast released by Weather Tiger. In yellow, you can see the projected accumulated cyclone energy, ACE, for this hurricane season, while in black, we have the 74 year average. In terms of probabilities, Weather Tiger projects that this hurricane season could be more active than usual. One of the main factors is that Weather Tiger's model predicts a possible return to La Nina conditions in August and September, even though it is currently dissipating. Notice that for August and September, the model projects that we will have La Nina conditions or possibly neutral conditions, which could favor cyclonic activity in the Atlantic. It is important to mention that these early forecasts, typically released in the spring, tend to have a significant margin of error. This is mainly due to the spring predictability barrier in the ENSO region, where, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, it is very difficult to predict how ENSO conditions will be for the peak of the season. Usually, we have to wait until May to get a clearer picture. However, in general, most groups are projecting that the Atlantic hurricane season could be slightly more active than usual. This aligns with AccuWeather's forecast, which predicts between 13 to 18 tropical storms, 7 to 10 hurricanes, and of those, 3 to 5 major hurricanes. Compared to what we saw in 2024, 
AccuWeather is forecasting a less active season than in 2024 but more active than the 30-year average, which is 14 storms, 7 hurricanes, and 3 major hurricanes. For now, these are the two forecasts that have been released, but remember that next Thursday, Colorado State University will be publishing its forecast, along with other groups throughout April. By the end of this week, I will record a new video specifically discussing Colorado State University's forecast. That's all for now. But before I go, I invite you to subscribe to my channel. First, give this video a like, then click the red subscribe button and hit the bell icon. See you next time.